Hey, what's up, fellas? Today's experiment is for Jeremy. His burner has just melted cast iron in eight minutes, and that's from a cold start. So let's check this out. Hey, what's going on, fellas? This video is for Jeremy and his team who are gonna be doing some cast iron smelting. So let's check out this foundry that I built to exhibit the features of the burners that I'm gonna be Wondering why I have this box sticking off the side of my foundry. That is because this combustion chamber runs at red hot temperatures. So it will, in effect, act as an air preheater. As incoming air passes over it, it will recapture that energy and send it right back into the foundry. And that heat shield is gonna kinda keep the wind off the burner and stuff like that. It will also be enshrouded in fire brick. Okay, fellas, in this next piece of footage, we are going to use like an average high power propane burner here, your typical forge burner, to exhibit the reasons why I go through the extra trouble of building these burners and why they're so successful at what they do. So let's take a look at why just an average propane burner just can't touch what these things can do. Okay, you can see we've got fuel coming out of the top. That is with no air input whatsoever. Very lazy flame. Not a whole lot of action. If I can get you a shot down inside of there. Now I'm going to add some air with the air lamp. You know, it makes sense we were only able to achieve 2,000 degrees in this. Granted the fact that that torch at thermal coupled temperature is only about 1,900 to 2,000 degrees. That's as hot as it will get if you use the thermal couple to test it. However, this bad boy right here can max out a K-type thermal couple at over 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a substantial piece of equipment. Kind of hard to see it. These are air breathers. They pull superheated air off the outside of the burner into the flame. Because when you're melting steel, you don't want anything cooling anything off. Which is to my next point. The input, the air input on this device is what heats up the fuel and everything else. A lot of people are always telling me, why ain't you running the fuel through that? Or they're telling me to wrap a coil of fuel around the burner. Been there, done that. I have videos on it where I actually take the coil apart after just several hours of operation to observe varnish buildup inside the coil that reduces the efficiency drastically and is a cascade effect to the point where it just no longer works and clogs up. So by using air, superheated air, we are able to eliminate the extreme buildup that would be encountered if we used fuel. Fuel would boil in here and varnish up the line and eventually clog up. It's just not a good idea. So we are passing the air through, heating up the fuel inside this T-fitting, and it brings it up to about 250 to 300 degrees, which is perfect. We don't want to boil the fuel. If you put a thermal gun on this uh, T-coupling, it's right around 300 degrees, and that's perfect in my world. That's why this loop is only the size that you see. The next important thing is dry air. The slightest bit of water spraying through this thing will produce steam, and steam has a tremendous ability to absorb heat. So, we're going to be using a primary water separator a secondary water separator and a very large desiccant canister to run this device. We're going to be using a four-cylinder electric compressor 
for the test. Okay, so we got 479 grams of cast iron here. Let's see how long it takes from a cold start to melt this stuff using these types of burners. Okay, it's 1.10 in the afternoon, about 35 degrees out. We're gonna try this thing out on diesel first, just to get a flow gauge here. Just so we can get some good readings on the flow rate, and that way we can dial in by simply dividing by two for the waste oil figures. Let's check this out. You see here I have the burner encased and some fire brick. That is going to allow that glowing combustion chamber to act as an air preheater. It's gonna work out pretty good here. Five minutes in, we're already at 2,400 some degrees. Guys, I was wrong again. We're at about six minutes here and we're already melting cast iron. From a cold start, six minutes to liquid metal. Now these shades don't do us any justice here. I get a good look at it here in a second. It is, a, you can see perfectly that we are in fact melting. We are not even seven minutes into this. I call it eight minutes because it's been completely melted by then, but the cast iron, that biggest piece, melted in around six minutes there. And I think it was, uh, the next time I checked the clock was right around eight minutes. And by that point, all the metal is completely melted. You can see that clear pool down in there. That is so awesome. Guys, just eight minutes in and the entire charge has melted. It's 123 and we in 10 minutes we have blistering molten iron. Look at that. That is incredible. Oh, that is so awesome. Okay guys, I just checked the clock. It looks like that was eight minutes. And we were able to turn 47 grams, I think it was, into molten cast iron. So as you can see, this torch is no joke. This thing is not playing around. I don't know of any propane foundry burners that can do that, guys. And I guarantee you, we could have melted a lot more than that. This is just 10 minutes. And I can feel the heat screaming off this bad boy. It did not like being stood off from the intake. I did have to push the burner all the way up against the intake. It did not like the standoff. I'm glad I made it adjustable in the event that were to happen. You never know where a burner is going to want to live. And I'm so afraid this is just going to blow up in my face or something. It is still molten, I believe. Oh yeah. That is nuts, you guys. Ooh, let's take a temperature reading of that. Oh wow, what is going on there? 
some kind of strange surface activity taking place. Okay, that can't be right. There's something wrong with this thing. It's saying that's only 2,000 degrees. 2,004 degrees. There's some kind of weird oxygenation going on. So, so there you have it, Jeremy. I think we were right around eight minutes and we had molten cast iron. We'll talk about strategy later on down the line. I just wanted to show you what that burner can do. The reason I did the diesel test first is because it is the second hottest fuel available and it's very cheap to run. I'll show you the price figures and all that. Probably already seen them by now, but for the most part, I'm going to do a waste oil test also. I just want to get this footage to you and get something uh, uploaded as soon as possible just to show you that um, things are taken care of over here. You're going to be just fine. You ain't going to have any problem melting cast iron. Now, I do want to warn you that contrary to popular belief and myth, waste oil is the coolest or coldest burning fuel there is, waste motor oil that is. It does not give a flame temperature over 1800 some degrees. Um, in some cases you can get it hotter than that, but for the most part it is a very cold flame. It, you can melt cast iron with it, I've done it before, but it can actually take longer because the flame is not as hot. Now as far as BTUs go, that's different than heat. The temperature of a flame has nothing to do with BTUs, so that just means we can heat up more metal to a lower temperature. But at any rate, there you have it. Um, I think that thing is working amazing. I am impressed that we were able to do that in eight minutes. That is nuts, you guys. At nightfall, we will do a test run of this burner to show you what it looks like without being installed on the foundry. I hate it when they show you foundry builds, but they don't show you what the burner looks like by itself. That's kind of important to me. You can kind of get an idea of how effective a flame is going to be based on its flame profile when it comes to these high temp melts. Melting copper and aluminum, that's nothing. But um, the cast iron requires a little bit more attention to detail. 